So Adobe has been on a bit of an AI tear recently, and at the Adobe Max event in London, we got even more big announcements. Last week saw the arrival of generative AI tools in Premiere, and obviously they're not gonna let Photoshop gather dust. So today we have our first look at the new Firefly V3 model. Not only that, but we're gonna have a number of new features that are going to be built directly into Photoshop utilizing Firefly V3. So we're gonna take a look at all of that, plus some Adobe research that I dug up that was not mentioned in the London event. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off with Firefly, since all of this will kind of lead into all of the new Photoshop features, uh, we have Firefly version three. This will be available in the Photoshop beta as well as the Firefly website, which will be linked down below. Firefly 3 is calling out for a broader range of styles for illustrations, photographic art, vector looks, as well as uh, better photographic quality and better prompt accuracy. Overall, it is looking definitely much better than the previous Firefly model and like, you know, just it's on another planet from Firefly V1. One thing that does seem to be fairly heavily messaged is the fact that we will be getting more varied options in our outputs when we prompt in Firefly 3. Uh, for example, uh, taking a look here, the prompt here is hyper-realistic photo, macro photograph of an abstract iris in the style of marine life, cordyceps mushroom inside pupil surface. You know, given the fact that this is Firefly, we got cordyceps mushrooms, I think somebody over at Adobe is a pretty big Last of Us fan. I'm not gonna finish reading that whole thing. You can read it if you want to. Uh, but yeah, taking a look at these four images, there is definitely variation between the four, not so much in terms of composition, but at least in terms of like color and texture. Now here's where things get pretty interesting because yes, Firefly does have a broader range of styles, but it also now has a style reference feature. This would work by obviously taking a reference image, providing it to Firefly along with your prompt, and essentially saying like, this is the overall style that I'm looking for. An example they provided is the prompt here is an intricate photo bursting with life in the Amazonian rainforest. An elephant is drinking water while giraffes are walking in the background. And presumably this would be the output just as is. But by providing Firefly with an image to use as a style reference, we get an image like this or something done in kind of a hand-drawn sketch style. Uh, I actually really like this one a lot. We get this image, which is, to be honest, it's kind of a low mid if you ask me, but uh, the reference style here was an image of a prism. So, you know, what are you gonna do? And rounding out with the one that I really liked, which is kind of like this vector illustration style when provided with just sort of vector shapes, as you can see down there on the bottom right. There's some more really interesting stuff coming up with references in just a minute, but first uh, let's see them flex on better structure and straighter lines using a dude playing guitar. If there's one thing that I and most guitar players are super, super, super picky about when it comes to any AI generated imagery, it is uh, fingers on fretboards. But no, all of this looks remarkably accurate. Uh, it looks like he's fretting an A minor chord here. Uh, the frets all look uniform and straight. Uh, overall, it's a pretty decent image. Adobe seems very proud of their work with guitars. Uh, they follow it up with another image here. Uh, this one is pretty good. There's a little bit of a breakdown uh, in the frets here. You can see a little bit of like sort of warpiness here. Um, but, you know, I think that if you're not looking for it, you wouldn't necessarily see it. On the larger point of fingers, it does look like Firefly is still struggling a bit there. Listen, I'm not bagging on it. That seems to be a thing, you know, that's universal across all of the image generators. For example, in this image of this woman in her art studio, gazing out longingly, presumably fantasizing about leaving it all and moving to Venezuela to be with Hector. Hector. What, do you not make up elaborate backstories about AI-generated characters? Anyhow, as we can see here, we probably do have five fingers. Presumably the thumb would be over here. Uh, it's a bit of a garbled mess uh, between the index finger and the pinky is definitely super elongated. Again, not super bagging on it. This is a thing that most AI generators have an issue with. Uh, and overall, I think like skin texture looks really good. The lighting on her looks really good. And you know, most importantly, she looks like a real person. Moving over to the variety and creativity they gave an example of a rainbow bear playing a guitar looking at a roaring campfire. I told you, they're really flexing on the whole guitar thing. Bear is surrounded by trees in a forest with distant mountains in the background. And look, I'm not gonna put lipstick on a pig here. These are not the strongest of images, but that's okay, because that's not what Firefly excels at. 
because Adobe is trying to play as fair as possible, you know, obviously the Firefly model has been trained off of images from Adobe stock and I believe Shutterstock at this point. Obviously, there are not a lot of rainbow bears playing guitar in that data set. Uh, so, I mean, you got to give it up to it, though. It really swung for the fences on this, and it does an admirable job. Uh, that said, it's in the next big update to Firefly 3, where I think that you have a better chance of pulling off an image like that, namely because we now have structure reference. So this looks a lot like Control Net to those of you who are familiar with that. Uh, but essentially, you can take an image, uh, take the structure of that image, reprompt, and get variations in different different styles based off of it. So honestly, by combining structure references and style references, uh, I think for the most part, the sky's more or less the limit in terms of what you can probably generate in Firefly 3. I'll admit, it's actually kind of exciting to see Firefly coming along. 100% it has never been my like immediate jump to, like let's start generating in Firefly, but I always give it the old college try when I'm in Photoshop mucking about on an image. Speaking of which, let's head over there and see what's coming our way. So the big news coming to Photoshop is the fact that we can now generate full canvases from a text prompt. So as we can see here, we issue in a prompt and then hit the generate button. Uh, and then that will then provide us with three options to choose from. From there, you can you know select an area and then do your gen fills. Another example, utilizing generative fill, but this time uh, we've got a new little tool up here that is generate similar. Uh, to be honest, I actually really appreciate that. Rerolling uh, gen fills in Photoshop can be a bit of an organizational mess. We now have the ability to well, remove a background, which we have always been able to do, uh, but now we can generate a background as well. As you can see here, we now have two separate layers, uh, you know, a mask obviously over our bottle and our water. So yeah, that's uh, that's actually kind of a big time saver there. I mean, I am presuming that the background generations will be contextually aware of the foreground. So, you know, hopefully you'll be getting color choices that match. Another interesting feature coming up is the ability to reference image within a mask. Uh, this is something that I actually ran across in the documentation for state Stable Diffusion 3 in my last video. I thought it was fascinating that this kind of new feature is appearing in two places at once. Uh, the way it works, and it's a little bit on the odd side, uh, is that obviously, you know, you can generate up a B and then uh, once you uh, select it, uh, you can then reference image it. Um, in this case, they chose kind of like this necklace. Is it even a necklace? That's a lot of necklace. It looks like something that Anne Hathaway wears in some movie that she's a princess. Um, <laughs> And from there, uh, you can prompt Queen Bee of Diamonds and Gold, uh, and then it'll basically generate up that bee based off of that necklace. Is it 100% ready for prime time? I'm not sure. I think it would very much depend on what you're trying to mask and what you're trying to reference. Uh, that said, this isn't necessarily too bad. Uh, this is something that I might take through a creative upscaler afterwards just to kind of, you know, make it a little more cohesive and give it a little more zazz. But I am very interested to see where this whole masking and image referencing thing goes. For sure, it's definitely going to open up a lot of creative possibilities. I think it's just going to take a lot of experimentation uh, on our part to figure out what its best use case is. We also have a new adjustment brush feature. Uh, this one, you know, obviously allows you to brush an area. Uh, and then in this case, they change the hue uh, to kind of like this teal bluish color. Uh, to be honest, this is something that uh, we obviously could do before. Uh, I would qualify this one under maybe ease of use and simplification of tools. Rounding out with another quality of life update, uh, but this one I think is actually a really pretty good one, uh, is the fact that you can now sort of live preview font changes directly on your canvas. Uh, yeah, this is actually super handy. I don't know how many times that I've been running through the font list. I've seen something that I thought would work well. And then, you know, and when you activate it, it's like, now this is terrible. Uh, why did I choose Papyrus or Papyrus Bold if you saw the sequel? Again, the Firefly 3 model will be coming soon to the Photoshop beta, but it will also be available on the Adobe website as well. Moving on, but you know, staying with Adobe, uh, it's always interesting to keep an eye on what's happening on the Adobe research side, mostly because you know whatever you see there will often turn into something that you will see in the Adobe Max Sneaks. Sneaks is obviously the place that we see a lot of the big new stuff that they've been working on. For example, last year we saw video in painting there, and obviously this year uh, it hit Premiere. 
So two papers that have appeared recently, and I'm not saying either of these will necessarily appear at max, but uh, you know, they might. First up, we have Video Gig again, who yes, did fight Godzilla in a 1968 movie. So this is an 8X video upscaler. You can see it in action here. This is taking a 128 by 128 uh, GIF, I guess, uh, and then upscaling it up to 1024 by 1024. Um, not only preserving details, but enhancing them as well. Um, the important part here is that this isn't doing a lot of hallucinations. Overall, I am super impressed with the results uh, taking this video of this girl who has clearly beaten the Angry Birds level that she has never been able to beat. Um, yeah, it does a really, really pretty fantastic job cleaning it up um, right down to the fabric of the clothes that she's wearing, um, the mole um, that's on her neck that a lot of other models would either probably smudge out uh, and just the hair textures and overall skin textures look pretty great. Video Gig Again works by stacking a number of models. The base model is Gig Again, but that tends to have sort of flickeriness, uh, temporal incoherencies. It kind of does hallucinate a little bit. Um, from there, they take it through a number of different steps, adding in consistency, but then also adding in blurriness. So another model to remove the blurriness. And that finally results in, in the final model where we can actually now see that there are ants moving around. Thanks, thanks, thanks guys. So of course the question is, will we be seeing this at Adobe Max this year? And I, you know, I don't know, but you know, if we do, it is certainly going to be giving Topaz a run for its money. Next up is customizing text to image diffusion with camera viewpoint controls, and that needs a snappier name. Uh, this allows additional control on camera viewpoint for a custom object. So essentially you train on the custom object and then you know you can essentially prompt in 360 degrees of that object. This is actually fine-tuned feature nerf blocks, uh, and then the backgrounds are obviously generated via stable diffusion. Now, the downside here is that this takes up to 50 images in a 360-degree rotation in order to train the model. So while I don't necessarily see it as something that we'll all be practically using, I do think that it actually does have a pretty good use case for product shots such as like car adverts, or if you have a business selling rubber duckies. So that's it for today. Well, I mean, I think that's it for today unless Adobe drops another bombshell. We still haven't heard what they're doing with After Effects. Although I did have an interview with Adobe last week where I did ask them about that. Plus we chatted a lot more about what's happening in Premiere yeah, along with Sora, uh, Runway, Gen 2, Two and Pika. If you haven't seen that interview, it is coming up in just a minute. And there is a little tidbit in there that I still have not heard discussed anywhere else. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.